Are you saying that my balance has so many numbers, your computer can't even handle it? Yes, I didn't know that was even possible. <laughs> oh, did you hear that? Your husband's calling his bank to check his balance. <laughs> I have worked this job for over 10 years, and this is the first time this has happened. Mr. Williams, I think it's safe to say that you are the richest man in Chicago. <laughs> wow. Hey, I didn't mean to eavesdrop, Hi. but you mentioned that your company needs $4 million or you're going to be in big trouble. And I think that I can help. You. Kevin, who's been living off of his wife for the past oh, four, two years? Okay. Are you delusional? She needs $4 million. Stop trying to be some kind of big hero. You don't believe me? Uh, I want you to remember this moment because it's gonna feel so good when I get to say I told you so. Okay, Kev, mm. stop. Rachel, please, please stop. Listen, as much as I appreciate it and as much as I would love for you to help me with the four million dollars, I don't think that's possible because you haven't had a job since we got married. Dude. Why don't you tell me you're a billionaire? I just want to keep it a secret for now. Why? So glad you could finally make it. These dishes aren't going to wash themselves. Sorry, I was doing the dishes earlier and spilled on my shirt. I went in the other room to change quickly, but I fully intended on doing them when I got back. Oh, wow. Thank you. That would be so very helpful of you. I mean, you've only been living as a guest in our home for the last two years, but really, doing the dishes more than makes up for that. Dishes? Seriously? I do a lot more than dishes. I've become my mother-in-law's very own maidservant. But I could never tell them the truth because it would upset Lily, my wife. And I'm already on thin ice with her. The last thing our relationship needs is for her parents to hate me even more than they already do. Silencing his thoughts, Kevin turned to his mother-in-law. You know, you've been so generous to me and Lily. The least I can do is the dishes. So just let me know if there's anything else. You could get a job. You could make some money. You know, our Lily could have married anyone. God knows what got into her, and she chose you. I'll prove my love for her. One day, you'll see. I'll be worthy of Lily. Right. I highly doubt that. The only reason why I'm not pushing Lily to divorce you is because she was so stupid not to get a prenup. She is the chairman of a huge corporation, and I don't want you taking half of her money. Welcome home, babe. Kevin still got butterflies every time he looked at Lily. Her beauty was undeniable, but that's not why he loved her. She was the most driven and hardworking woman he had ever met. She had worked her way up from assistant to chairman within a very short span of time. Hey, Kevin. Hi, Rachel. Mm. Nice shirt. Oh, I was doing the dishes earlier. Oh, that's so cute. In my house, we pay someone to do that. Oh, okay. Rachel, please don't be mean. Thank you. You're going to make us proud one day, right? Mm-hmm. Kevin felt guilty about hiding his past from Lily. They had been married for two years now, and Lily still had no clue that Kevin was born into one of the wealthiest families in Chicago. Kevin hid it from her because he did not want Lily to marry him for his money. But then, as luck would have it, Kevin literally lost everything the day that they got engaged. Grandpa, I'm engaged. You fool, markets have crashed. Your bet was wrong. You are bankrupt. What? You are a spoiled prince. I'm kicking you out of the family. You need to learn a lesson. And now... Grandpa. 
two years later, Grandpa. he is the richest man in Chicago. But how will he tell his wife the truth? She still thinks that he's just some unemployed schmuck. He needs to trust her before he can reveal his secret. Why don't you freshen up? All right, right away. Okay, thank you. After changing his shirt for the second time that night, Kevin walked towards the living room, but stopped when he heard Rachel whispering to Lily. I don't know how you do it. You're a badass boss, bitch. And Kevin's kind of pathetic. He's like one of those before pictures in a commercial. Oh my god. Why do you stay with him? He wasn't always like this. He was... When we first met, he was so confident and he was so charming. And I don't know what happened to him, but I just feel like if I stay with him long enough, he might find himself again. And I really love the man that he used to be. But do you love him now? I would be lying if I didn't admit that sometimes I feel like, I don't know, more of a caretaker than a partner. And I don't know, he's just been so closed off lately and like the romance completely gone. I don't know, I, I just know that if I ever told him this directly that I would lose him. I love him, I really do. I just, I don't know. I don't know if I'm in love with him anymore. You could have any guy you want. You're stunning, kind, killing it at your job. Mm -mm. Have you thought about getting a divorce? You shouldn't stay with someone out of pity. Okay, Rachel, I don't, I don't pity him. I love him. I, I just want him to be the man he used to be. I want him to be the man that I know that he is. And honest, okay, Rachel, I don't want to talk about this. I, I, I spent my entire day putting out fires at work. I, I don't want to do it at home. Of course, I know what you mean. Yeah. But what is going on at work? You seem more stressed out than usual. Well, uh, we got a new contract last month and there was an error in the calculation of some data. So the product didn't meet the requirements and now we have to compensate the client with seven million. You checked your value. It had been over two years since he had last touched his VIP black card. Kevin turns the card and dials a number behind it. Hello, Mr. Williams. Welcome to the VIP customer service. How may I help you today? Yes, could you check the balance of my account? Of course. One moment, please. Hello? Mr. Williams, are you still there? Yes. Mr. Williams, uh, I apologize, but the balance on your black card is unfortunately too big for me to handle over the phone. It appears that the digits are higher than our computer is able to process. In order to get your exact account balance, we need you to come in person and meet with someone from our VIP office. Would that work for you? 
Kevin lies on the couch thinking about the conversation he had with his bank. Is he really the richest man in Chicago? Can he finally be the man he was when he first met his wife, Lily? Kevin's eyes become heavy and he falls asleep. Of course you fell asleep. Jesus. You were probably playing video games all night. Christ. I don't know what my daughter sees in you. I'm using the car to run some errands. So why don't you make yourself useful for once and drop your wife to work? I'm on it. <clears throat> hey, Lil, yeah. you ready? Yeah, sorry, I'm running late. All right, well, your mom's taking the car, so I'm gonna drop you off on the bike. Okay. You look beautiful. Thank you. Um, sorry, can we go? I'm running so late. Yeah, 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 okay. let's go. Let's go. Great. Thank you. you. Okay? You seem a little stressed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could say that I'm stressed. Um, we just got the report back this morning and it basically confirmed my worst nightmare, which is that we are not going to get any external investor support. So by the end of the week, we are going to declare bankruptcy. And um, this morning, all the major shareholders are holding a meeting and uh, I have to be there. And to be honest, I just feel so terrible about everything and about all the employees that are gonna lose their jobs. And I feel like it's all my fault. Well, it wasn't your decision, so it's not going to be your fault. No, it is my fault. I'm the no, chairman. I, I'm the chairman of the company, which means that I'm responsible for everything that happens. Okay, so go. yes, it is. Let's go. All right. Hi. All right. Nice. Have a good day, baby. Thank you mm -hmm. for the ride. Yeah. You're welcome. Lily! Hi, Bradley, hi! Oh my gosh! Oh, it's so good to see you! Uh, hey, why do you need a crappy Uber bike to drop you up at work? Oh, you no! You know, you should have just called me. I would have picked you up. Hey! It's not... How you doing? I'm Kevin. And, uh, that's my bike. And, uh, I'm her husband. Yes. Oh! So this is the famous Kevin. Yes! This is him! <laughs> yeah. yeah, Rachel's told me everything about you. That's she... <laughs> She, uh, she also does a very good impression of you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Lily, I am so glad that I bumped into you. You know, I heard about everything that's been going on with your company. Oh. And, you know, you know my heart aches for you. So, uh, I got a little pick-me-up for you. What? No. Bradley reached into his car and took out a gift box. With a snake-like smile, Bradley hands the box to Lily. It was a beautiful diamond necklace, hardly a pick-me-up from a coworker. Bradley, this is this is too much. I can't. This is extravagant. Oh, I can't accept on. this. Come on, I know you like it. Kevin understood immediately that Bradley was blatantly hitting on his wife. Saving Lily's company was one thing, but first he had to handle Bradley. A beautiful woman deserves a beautiful necklace. No. Ain't that right, Kev? Is this the Dream Lover's necklace? Was that? Well, it'd be impossible because it's really hard to get the original. There's only 10 in the world, and each one costs $2.8 <laughs> million. Dollars, so it's hey, Kevin! Oh, how could you? Hey, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to. You did that on purpose. No. No, th this is not a knockoff. It's a top-of-the-line copy. Lily, I remembered how much you admired this thing. You know, Rachel told me about it. I paid a hundred grand to a jeweler to create oh, a copy for you. Bradley, I'm, I'm so sorry. I know this was an accident, right, Kevin? <laughs> I'm not sorry. You deserve something that's actually real, not some cheap knockoff from a douchebag. Whoa, like whoa. okay, you stop, stop, stop. stop. I need you to apologize to Bradley right now. 
he's a representative of the Williams Corporation. Mm. They're going to invest the money to save my company. All right? Hold it. Please. I'm sorry that I broke the necklace. Thank you. I'm so sorry. I'm I'm running very late, but I will oh. see you. Hey, stop. I know you can hear me. You're a loser. And poor Lily shall never have anything nice thanks to you. First of all, Lily's my wife, so stay away from her. And second of all, big guy, I'm the only one who buys her expensive gifts. And thirdly, get the hell out of my way. You're blocking my path. <laughs> Nice try, idiot. You can't even afford a car. How the hell you ever buy her anything nice? Williams Manor. We meet again. Hello? Hey. Yeah, I'm sorry about earlier. I know how stressed you've been, and I shouldn't have done that. I'm taking Bradley's bait. The guy just gets under my skin. Yeah, that guy is the best chance that I have at saving my company. He directly reports to the Williams family. I don't know if you know who they are, but they're the richest family in Chicago, and I need them. Everything's going to be okay. I promise. I love you. Yeah, I know. Listen, I really, uh, I have to get back to work. It's busy. I'll just talk to you later. Kevin was amazed that after all of these years, Lily still had not connected the fact that his last name was the same last name as the Williams Company. She must think that it's just a coincidence. Well, she was right about one thing. Even though the Williams family was secretly bankrupt, there was a Williams family member who was now officially the richest man in Chicago, and he was going to save her company. I knew you'd come. Grandfather, uncle. Why don't we cut the fake formalities? You look good, Kev. I can see that you've uh, been enjoying your freedom. And the sabbatical. <laughs> Obviously, it's really done wonders for you. <laughs> you call kicking someone out of the family a sabbatical. That was unfortunate, <laughs> but at the time was necessary. <laughs> Let's not dwell on events of the past, son. Let's get to business. Yes. I came because I believe that I can solve your crisis with my investment. And I'll do it in exchange for two conditions. Number one, by six o'clock tonight, you're going to get me a dream lover's necklace. And number two, you're going to fire one of your board members, Bradley. Consider it done. Kevin's grandfather nodded at his uncle to make some calls. <clears throat> All right. Let's get down to business. How much money do you need? Used to being in charge, Kevin's grandfather widened his eyes. He liked this new version of Kevin. It's not a lot of money. What's not a lot of money? Eight billion dollars. <laughs> $8 billion is not a lot of money. You know I was kicked out of this family for a lot less. Oh, I'm not gonna beg you, boy. Remember, you're also a Williams. This is our legacy that is at stake. Is it done? Kevin looked at his uncle. 
a man he had always feared. Now the tables have turned. He was fulfilling Kevin's demands. Your demands have been met. Now, will you help us or not? As much as I'd love to help, Grandpa, I don't have $8 billion to give. Oh, don't play dumb boy. Have you not checked the value of your stocks? 20% of the shares you own are worth at least $9.3 billion, and that is increasing on the daily. Kevin's heart started racing just the day before he had just $50 in savings, and now he had more than $9 billion? You care about my legacy. Did you care about my legacy two years ago when you kicked me out of the family? And now you expect me to care about you. You know I'm married. Yeah, I got engaged the day before you decided to send me into exile. I'm the son-in-law of another family. And I'm not going to throw them under the bus to have loyalty to you. The only reason you reached out is because you're declaring bankruptcy. You left me for dead. And now you want me to bring you back to life. Because I'll help you build an empire. You want to be the man again? You'll be the most successful Williams known to date. I'll let you have Williams Media. Williams Media? That's Uncle's company. You sure are fond of giving away things that aren't your own. He would gladly offer it to save the family. Williams Media is one of our most profitable and high-profile companies. It is the largest and most successful entertainment company in America. Just think of all the celebrities we've signed. Tomorrow, you'll take over his head. You'll have a company to run, a purpose. So, what do you say? I'll accept your conditions. Williams Media will be my first acquisition on my journey to build my own family empire. Tomorrow the people at my bank will get on it. Grandfather. Uncle. Goodbye. That boy. Hi, um, I just wanted to shoot you a call and uh, apologize for earlier today. Um, I just, I want things to feel the way that they used to feel between us. Um, but anyway, sorry, I was just, I was just calling about my family gathering and I wanted to see if you could maybe pick up something new to wear. My family can just be so judgmental and it would it would mean so much to me if you just made a good impression, especially because they have so much pressure on me right now about my job. Of course, anything for you. I promise to make you and your family proud tonight. I love you. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah. Oh my goodness. That's so embarrassing. How like, how does our, our chairwoman get yeah. married to a man with a broken motorbike? Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> 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 it's like something you can find in the dump. I know. He is such a loser. He was a miracle having divorced yet. No, it's so funny because you will never guess what happened or what he said to her earlier. No, no, no. Oh. He swore that he would get her a dream lover's necklace. Uh, a dream lover's necklace. <laughs> 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 We've seen what he drives. How in the world would he be able to afford something as rare and luxurious as the dream lover? <laughs> he's not just broke, he's delusional. What an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, good afternoon, guys. It seems like there's a lot of things that you don't know, so... 
I'd be extra thoughtful before calling someone else an idiot. That makes sense? Right? Thank you. All right, that's enough. Kevin, you and Lily have been married for more than two years now and still no children. Does your family have any genetic history or issues with fertility? Are you questioning my manhood? And no, both my parents are very healthy. And as far as I know, there's no genetic disease on my side of the family. Really? You know, it's weird. I don't really know your parents that well. Maybe we should schedule a doctor's appointment for you and your parents to get tested. And that way we can see if there are any bad genes on your side. There's no need. Are you trying to find reasons to break up my marriage? <laughs> Why are you being so defensive? All I'm asking is for your parents to get a checkup. Honestly, Kevin, this is for your own good. And I won't take no for an answer. Dorothy, can we please do this some other time? I have a college reunion I have to go to. Kevin, is that you? Tucker, how oh. you doing, man? <laughs> it's so good to see you. You have an Asian day, dude. <laughs> is that your nice new car out there? Let's just say I'm a lucky guy. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still as eccentric as ever. Is that your ride over there? Well, hey, that is the first thing I bought with my own money, so I kind of love it a little bit. Hey, oh, boys. Hey, dude. Guess who's coming to the party? Who? Brittany. Brittany. Oh, she looks stunning. I'm not surprised though, she was the most popular girl in high school. I figured she would have left Chicago by now. You know, I heard that Britney's about to become a superstar. <laughs> she's too sweet to ever brag about it, but she's gonna sign with Williams Media next no week. No way. Yeah. Williams Media is the biggest media company in America. If Britney signs with them, she'll be famous like that. Kevin felt a little excited at the idea of running Williams Media and talking with Britney, who would be his newest client. Kevin walks up to Britney. <clears throat> Brittany frowned and looked very unhappy. She raised her hand to cover her nose. What is that strange smell? It's like literally suffocating. Hey, Kevin, have you taken a shower? Who dresses like that to a school reunion? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still a weirdo. Hello? Hey, Kev, uh, don't forget to get the new suit for Vice. Yeah. Yeah, baby, I could. Lily got home from work to find an unfamiliar man. Hi. Um, sorry, Mom, who's this? He's been waiting for you. Oh, okay. I was told to deliver this to you with caution. To not leave until I personally got this to you safely. Okay. Um, who's it from? From our boss at the Williams family. Good day, miss. <laughs> when she opened it, she was instantly stunned. Her mother's eyes widened. She could not help but let out a scream. Oh my God! This, this is the dream lover. Wow, whoever your admirer is, is very generous. Lily could tell at a glance that this was an authentic dream lover. The one she was holding was definitely genuine. Lily looked at it and felt that it was surreal. Was she dreaming? Who exactly gave it to her? Could it be Bradley Smith? It had to be. He was the only person she knew who had direct ties to the Williams family, and he had promised publicly to find her the real one. She had butterflies. You must wear the Dream Lover necklace tonight. Oh, Mom, no, I can't. Yeah. It's too much. It's she said modestly, but deep down she knew it was out of guilt that Kevin would hate seeing her wearing this extravagant gift from Bradley, especially after everything that happened this morning. Just try it on. As her mother placed the necklace around her collarbones, she finally felt what it was like to be seen by a man. She couldn't deny how wonderful it felt to receive appreciation like this. Her hands fell to the pendant, and she thought of how unhappy she'd been this last year how the love between her and Kevin had been fading. You look beautiful, Lily. You deserve this. You've worked so hard. 
I only wish you would allow yourself more happiness in life. She did deserve this, this feeling. She had held on to this dream with Kevin for far too long. She was ready to move on. It wasn't about Bradley. She didn't admire him in that way. It was about loving herself. She took a deep breath and knew what she had to do. She had made her decision. Tonight, she would tell Kevin that it was over. She didn't love him anymore. The door creaked open. Through it stepped the most handsome man Lily had ever seen. Kevin's hair perfectly placed and he wore a custom fit suit tailored to his body, which looked extremely ripped. <laughs> Kevin? She hadn't remembered how fit he was since he always wore oversized clothes and sweatpants most days and he smelled familiar. It was her favorite scent, a cologne she had bought him long ago. Everything she was just feeling slipped away for a moment. Was this real? She was torn. She had just made the decision to leave, but now Kevin walked in, reminding her of what made her fall in love with him in the first place. What was she going to do? So you can show up this year. Fun. Hi. Hey. It is so nice to see you, you again. Too. How you doing? Take a look at that. Gorgeous. Erin. Hi. Hi! Oh my gosh, it's you. so nice to see you. You look great. You look beautiful. I love your dress. Hi, hon. How are you? Good. Oh, nice to see you. Oh my gosh, the cousins made it. Oh, did they? They never make it. Yeah. Do you want to get something to drink over there? Sure. Kevin! Hi! Jesus. It's not every day that I get to see you in your regular clothes. <laughs> nice suit! I think I saw one on sale at the mall for what? 75? 100 bucks? Great quality. Is that true? Why don't you get a decent suit? I just didn't want to pay for one. <laughs> well, you didn't pay for it. <laughs> what, the shop owner take one look at you and just see how pathetic you are and just give it to you for free? <laughs> okay, let's sit down. This is yeah. not worth it. Willie, your dress looks cheap. <laughs> My suit costs 20 grand. It's designer. Look, man. Oh, she's calmed down and we can all Don't do touch me. <laughs> I'll get my suit dirty. It's just a $20,000 suit. It's gonna get me dirty. Okay. And she might dress casual. But she likes fine jewelry. <laughs>